The topic I would like to talk about today is something I used to make fun of back in the 90s and zero years when I was making fun of the transhumanists. Not that I don't agree with them in many ways. I think they have they have some aspects of it correct and seemingly inevitable for some people at least. But I used to make fun that, uh, and not just make fun, it's a possible fact, seeing how the internet goes, right? Um, that um, as soon as we figured out, as soon as the singularity came along and we figured out how to wire ourselves mechanically and technologically uh, to machinery, uh, uh, not just operate them, but become them, you know, a mixed, uh, like a bionic individual. That is the aspiration of the transhumanists. Do not confuse it with transgenderism. The transhumanist can be, and they usually are, straight as heck. Uh, however, uh, they have this aspiration uh, to fuse themselves into machinery. Think of it what you will. I wonder if they are going to use the three shells. However, um, I used to make fun of them that as soon as they figure that out, one of the first things that is going to happen is that some some teenager with pimples in their face who are still changing their voice uh, is going to hack into the system of somebody else they do not really like or they just for the for the fun and giggles they will make them slap themselves in the face in public or make them release their bowels in the middle of a mall or make them just run around run in a circle uh, at the center of the city while they cry for help and somebody to help them to because they have been hacked so as soon as they figure that uh, technology out the first thing is going to happen is that a lot of uh, idiot savants are going to butt in and use their petty prejudice and personal preferences uh, to screw with people. It's inevitable. That's what has always happened. Uh, that has never stopped. And in fact, it's growing in a constant nowadays. It's becoming a thing for everyone. See the internet now, the governments are trying to stomp it down. And the more they try, the more they are going to fail. And this is why we have change in the world, people. Because if there's one thing humanity loves to do is to contest the powers that be, regardless of how powerful they are. And it has been a battle in the 20th century. The absolute control from government and the people. And government lost. At the end of the 20th century, people took over. They said enough is enough. And down the Berlin Wall it goes. And the great scary monster of the Soviet Union collapsed and China because they saw whoopsie daisy, they decided to accept capitalists within their country officially. Now, what has become of that in the 21st century, because there seems to be a constant fight between the uh, government and the people, uh, is that now other powers are trying to t fill in the void of totalitarianism. So apparently we are at it again. However, in the midst of it all, my joke, my initial joke, has become true in another sense. Imagine if we had the technology to imitate the voice of a person with absolute accuracy to the point that 
sentences, entire sentences are um, spoken as if it was the, the person speaking it themselves. So imagine if that could be possible. Now, imagine if not only the voice could be copied, but also if you could insert with the right software, you could insert the face of someone into someone's, someone else's body. Or if you, copy, if you could copy the entire room where the person live and just recreate certain situations. Just imagine if that was possible, if governments had that power. Are you thinking about it? Now, think about, imagine if some people related to government, but not really, like let's say members of their families, related families, could have access to this technology and they would be angry or pissed off at some boyfriend, a girlfriend, or the neighbor down the street, or a dog in the street, or whatever. I wouldn't say a dog because a dog wouldn't be bothered about that. And truth is that neither should you. Um, but imagine if somebody had access to this technology, was kind of savvy in the field, and uh, would use that knowledge to screw with people. Just screw with them, you know? It doesn't even need to be them. They would just like put someone else and insert the person's name or personal information. Could be anything of the sense. Altering the voice, making it feasible, you know? Imagine if this was possible. Well, it already is. It's, it's not theory, it's a fact. You can literally attach the face of people to, let's say, characters in movies. And there you have it. You, you can be the character in the movie. You can alter the voice. You, you can create entire uh, conversations using the voice of someone while the person never said such things. Now imagine if you had conversation with someone and some points of the conversation would be altered so the person would say ridiculous stuff or completely out of character stuff. It's already possible. It's already doable and people are already doing it. And sure enough, the things that we, we know so far are usually related to very famous people. For instance, Jordan Peterson's uh, reciting of poetry about uh, mother's milk or his discussion or his uh, sexual innuendos towards uh, someone else in a, in a debate. Uh, this has already happened. Um, it is out there on the internet. It is not Jordan Peterson, by the way. Uh, however, it's really interesting. It's fascinating, the level of technological advancement. It is something that really like when that really kind of took me out of that doomer phase I was into and I recommend it to everyone if you feel if you ever feel depressed that you should definitely check videos uh, at least videos you can check research you can take text uh, however you can start small uh, the smallest things become the greatest or something like that, Aristotle. Um, check the information about the recent or latest finds in, in science and technology, no fields, in whatever field you would like. That took me out, that was the, the kickstart for me to get out of that Duma phase. I could not feel bad knowing how many fantastic things that are being done by science nowadays. 
it, it made me feel good again. It made me have hope in humanity again because if you check uh, the what I like to call the dodo media, you know, because they are on the way to extinction, it seems. Natural selection is getting rid of them. Now, if you watch average media, TV media, it's usually really lowbrow entertainment, if not full-blown mass hysteria that you need to buy some product to solve. Uh, could be anything. So that kind of gets you down, right? It, it handles with your fear all the time. It builds up fear. And fear is usually based in the ignorance or rather incapacity to do something about a situation, right? However, if you check the new technological advancements, you will realize that this is not the reality we are living, that reality is actually developing at immense steps that humanity has never seen before. And every, we, every year or every two years or two and a half years, it seems to double. It's fantastic. At a point that we will be literally monkeys driving spaceships. That they will come if we keep on with that technological pace. Do you understand? But don't you worry, folks. There are people who are trying to prevent us from reaching there. Like, and one of the things, and I think I spoke about those same things before. I made several videos, but since the march of the morons seems to be going forward, um, a book I recommend for everyone. I have, I have to touch that topic again, because some people never learn, and uh, that is the issue we have to put up with today. Because while I was checking in the beginning when I dropped my Duma face, technological advancements. There was this footage of that scientist, the head of the scientific group that managed to land a satellite uh, in a moving asteroid or comet or meteor, however you wish to call it, uh, bolted in, the, in, in space. And until then, I was still concerned about we could be struck by a by a asteroid or meteor or whatever uh, please check the definitions to correct me before you want to correct me um, and it was amazing uh, the discovery of that when when that group of scientists managed to land a satellite in in a meteor in space i calmed down my my last concern about humanity was solved i do not scare anymore because what almost eliminated all life on earth it definitely got rid of most dinosaurs um is not an issue anymore it's not a, a potential threat anymore first because we can localize them before they seemingly as far as i know before they can even enter the solar system so we have plenty of time to get rid of any threat or to prepare for any threat then second we can land explosives in in such bullets regardless how big they are if we can just take them some angles out of their trajectory towards Earth, we take them tens of thousands of kilometers away from us. Explosives, we have plenty of. Nuclear devices, we have plenty of. We have plenty of those mechanisms of destruction that could definitely take the trajectory, if not completely obliterate, such uh, an asteroid. So that was a big victory to humanity and basically every living, <laughs> every living form in the world.
However, and the issue is the however, with the technology comes the morons. So there was a group of activists that made so much pressure. And mind you, they are not the majority. They are not the majority, but they are very vocal. They make a, very, a lot of noise. And they picked in the head of the scientific staff's shirt when he was making the announcement, calling it misogynistic and saying that it was degrading for all women to see this. Now, to the point that the, they managed somehow to break the scientist into not just crying in his knees, but begging for apologies for wearing a shirt that's, uh, which only reason that he was using it, mind you, English is not my first language, so, but only reason that he was using that shirt was actually to promote the work of one of his best friends who happened to be a woman who designed and made that shirt for him. Because the shirt, personally, I call it bad taste. So sure, you can, re you can attack him for his bad taste. But I wouldn't call him misogyny if he's actually promoting the work of a woman, right? Uh, he could have worn anything in that event, but he chose to promote the work of one of his best friends who happened to be a woman. Let that sink in. So the guys obviously do not hate women. He did not hate women. He was promoting one by wearing the shirt, which was declared to be misogyny by a group of people too incompetent to even understand what was being presented in front of them because all they could see was red. And this has been what always has stalled societies across time. And point being, we only managed to succeed in the Occident as a society and surpass all the other societies. And end slavery. We ended slavery. We literally did it wherever we went. And as soon as we left, it comes back call it coincidence when we finally put up and stood up against the the opportunists and the the cringe of humankind the dregs of humankind when we could put a stop to those people we had to stand against them we had to fight them and all the apathetic people they throw at us because they are apathetic and they really don't want, they have the herd mentality and don't want to bother anyone. So, okay, so go and kill those. By the, doing that, they are bothering someone. But you see, rather do that and, uh, and stop being annoyed by, by the dregs of society, you know? And, but as a positive trait, we are coming out of, of this whole thing that I kind of, give credit to the first philosophers and in a way Buddha, they were around the same age with the same kind of propositions like Buddha uh, and the initial philosophers, they had a lot in common, uh, a lot, like we are a consequence of what we think uh, and all that. So, Well, we are a consequence of who we think we are, isn't that what Buddha said? It is not far-fetched from some of the things that Socrates said, or Plato, or Plato, as Americans call him. Uh, but that makes me wonder, you know, right now, because of information technology, I find it very hard to the dregs of society, to the bad morons because they are good morons their morons can't help it but they're just minding their own business but the know-it-all the dunning-kruger effect of the morons do you understand the people who speak authority out of sheer ignorance 
That has always been the stone in the shoes of humankind. But hey, we are getting rid of it. And especially now with the age of information, we are definitely going to get rid of it unless two things happen. One, um, they shut down the internet. And right now, because of everything that has been happening, because of the fear of certain people of losing control over the situation, uh, has, according to my estimates, risen to the 40% probability. Today, because of the struggle for freedom of speech, shutting down an internet, the physical internet, like the, the computers that run the whole thing, has become not just a possibility, however, 40% probable, according to what I calculated. Um, I might make a video about this calculation, however, for now you have to stick with this, I need to keep it simple. So what to do in a time that information is available to everyone, that they can literally do anything when they don't like someone to destroy the person? And they have access to that technology. Because they will, if they are not doing that already, I see that people are killing themselves when some of their private life is being exposed. And that's the worst thing you can do. Because I believe there are rules, there are laws against that kind of exposure, right? There should be. I don't think that the powerful people would like to have themselves exposed that way. See the whole... <laughs> Epstein case um, but just imagine you know if bad people of our society the, the dregs the, the scum uh, the in, in absolutely incompetent to the point of becoming antisocial of literally hating humanity as a whole people who can make the head scientist who just figured a way of, of a group of scientists, he didn't do it alone, but who this group of scientists, when they were announcing that they had solved one of the major concerns about the survival of our planet, not just us, the entire planet, by developing the technology that would allow us to send satellites to potential threats against our planet in order to either destroy it or at least, at least, if they are too big, kind of move it some grades away from Earth that in the terms of space would be tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, depending on the distance they have been spotted to the time that we could launch defenses against it. Uh, just imagine. The group, the same kind of people that make a scientist cry, petty people with absolute power over society, who use our morals against us. What can we do? My proposal is to either get rid of morals altogether, because at some point, it will become mainstream. Right now it's in the shadows. It's in the corners. People get, you know, eventually stabbed as an exposed or some situation made up. So they have to either apologize or do whatever. Um, never accept blackmail, you know. There are laws, remember, especially if you're young and you are under pressure because somebody is using your information against you, there are laws. I'm sure it's going to be a rough time, but you can handle it because the law is in your side, okay? Remember that. If you're not doing anything really wrong, if it was a private conversation, the law is always in your side. So don't, don't be scared. The other person should be scared, and they usually are, and this is why they do that kind of stuff. 
They want to act tough. You understand? Bad idea, bad idea. Especially in the age of information. But what to do about those absolute morons? And I don't mean the guys who can't help it. I mean the guys who could actually help it, but decide not to, just to screw with people, just because they don't like them. Uh, that's very human. That's very humane, actually. It's okay not to like someone, but what you do with that, that's the key, right? So how to stop those people? Well, we either get, get rid of morals altogether, or we return to certain aspects of previous society, uh, like my grandparents that lived in a time that people ju just didn't talk about what people did in their privacy. It was considered rude. It was an unwritten rule that you shouldn't really talk about uh, what other people do in their homes. You should mind your own business. You understand? Mind your own business. Nowadays, everybody is, is bossing everybody around about all oh, the shock and horror, only to be found out that they are the ones actually doing it. It's always the case, or it's usually the case, not to say always, but it's usually the case that they are the ones who do it, and then they have to incriminate, try to incriminate others and what they do wrong. So this is why I say don't panic, okay, for those who... Uh, being blackmailed and everything. Go to the police, okay? Go to the police and sort it out there. You know, your privacy should be worth something. Although we have no privacy anymore. We have no privacy. There is no privacy anymore. That's over. The internet that was created by a military, a mix of the military with the, the, the academic institutions, has become the big, biggest, and it's not paranoia, it's a given fact, you know, like, literally, when your information is being sold, right, so companies can make money out of your personal information, your information is being sold. It is. That's no conspiracy theory, that's no uh, making this up, it is, this is a given fact, uh, places like Facebook have been called to court several times over but because they give a lot of gifts to the senators and, and all that they are really not put under the coals as the you know but that's for later those politicians believe me they know how to cook something you know how to squeeze money out of uh, out of people so don't you worry I'm pretty sure the the Facebook corporation is being forced to pay a lot of money to those officials so they will keep it hush hush so it's my wild guess so seems to be <laughs> um, so what to do to stop those guys well maybe if we stopped taking morals so seriously because after all it's basically conditioning and I have seen across my life that conditioning in action, that you, when you realize that it was just conditioning, all those negative reactions you had towards something, or even positive ones, were all a matter of conditioning. I believe I can say that after 50 years of life experience, I can say with certainty that certain things, certain aspects of our lives are ruled by the soul conditioning. They don't even make sense. They don't make sense. I have built an entire philosophical insight or philosophy based on this fact. And it all started when once I was in a line, when we used to have that kind of stuff, thank you internet, when once I was in a line waiting to sign some papers and I was looking, everybody was tired because in those days before the internet was big Everybody had to wait in line, and some lines crossed blocks, entire blocks, just to sign a paper, sometimes just to find out that you actually needed to go to the other side of the, of the city to, to resolve that issue. And when you got there, 
Then you were told that you needed to go back there, that no, they made a mistake and you needed to talk to somebody else. And that usually took a whole day. And when you finally got there, it was, it was closed. So you had to wait for the next day. So people wasted a lot of time in lines. And once I was in one of those lines, and I was looking, everybody was tired in the lines, everybody was waiting, and everybody was frustrated. So I decided to do something that people didn't do, because it was not considered polite somehow. Uh, I looked around, and I sat on the floor. Some people looked at me like, I don't know why, envy maybe, uh, like I had done something really wrong. I sat on the floor, I didn't shat in the floor, I sat in the floor because I was tired. I was in, in that bloody line the whole morning and the line wasn't moving, so I might just as well. However, other people, which I would deem maybe the most tired, but the most daring or the most intelligent in, the, in those lines, after they saw me sitting on the floor, because I was tired, they sat on the floor as well. Some people were still standing. <laughs> And some people were not just still standing, but they were standing and looking at us like, for sitting in the floor when you're tired. So when I talk about conditioning and about unnecessary or obsolete, obsolete morals, I have that memory in mind. And this is where my philosophy truly started. That's the day I started drafting a philosophy, an entire philosophy, out of the fact that we are doing useless things with no need to do it, suffering, while there's absolute no need that if we just instead did exactly what we wanted in the exact way that we wanted, just because it was for the best of us, without harming anybody else in the contrary, maybe even inspiring other people to do the same and be happy and be at least relaxed or relieved from, from stress, unnecessary stress. Maybe we would have a better society if we stopped bothering so much about made up rules, arbitrary rules that serve no one really. Seriously, what's the point of it? If you are tired, you need to rest, right? It's logical. And then it reminds me of children. Children are born logical. They are extremely logical. I have observed now directly in a daily basis for over 10 years three different children completely different universes different mindset different looks different everything and how they behave and they started very logical and they were very logical until they reached school then most of their knowledge most of their interests, most of their, their curiosity started fading away. And for me, it was terrifying to see this. But there's nothing I, I can do in that sense, because that's the way our society goes right now. And unfortunately, I need the opinion of, in this case specifically, of somebody else who happens to be Currently, she wasn't like that, but because she thought that she could 
you know, moved me in the direction that she wanted to go. Well, she did, like, basically she did everything. And she said to me, when, you know, when we broke up, the day we broke, or the night we broke up, I got everything I want without me saying anything. We were watching something together and then she just turned to me and said, I've got everything I wanted from you, you can go now. Just like that. And continued to watch the, I thought she was joking, but apparently she was not, it was a terrible night. Me and the children cried while she was just rolling her eyes. Like it was so boring to see us crying at the whole situation that I needed to leave. So that's the kind of person I have to deal with that I never thought she would be like that. Until she got everything she wanted. Well, that's an error. So, but is really my fault in that sense? So, you see, she's someone who happened to be currently in the side of the people that were standing while looking at us saying, how could, like, literally, literally, it's not a joke. I've seen it, I couldn't believe it. But then me and then the other people who just sat on the floor with, with me, they were just looking and they couldn't believe it either. First, after the first 10 minutes where they were just relaxing their bloody legs after the entire day of line work, you know, they were just, oh, oh this feels so good. That guy was right. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> just be sitting in the floor. By the way, it was a warm day, so double uh, bonus because the floor was cold and it felt double as good so not only <laughs> you could relax relieve your legs not even relax relieve your legs before they could relax um, but the feeling of being in the cold floor soaking like sucking the the extreme heat of the day into the ground back into earth was double bonus so it was equally amazing so after the first 10 15 minutes they were they were with me and we would just look at those people and you know we couldn't believe that some of uh, some people in those lines not just they were still standing because they didn't want to look bad they didn't oh what will what the people think what could they think Oh, those savages? I mean, seriously? Is that what you are afraid of? Being called a savage? Because what? They're going to take your food? They're going to take your kids? No. So, of course, be rational, you know? Don't do anything stupid. But, <laughs> you know, think before you do, as I did. I just concluded, what the hell? I'm tired, I need to sit down. Enough is enough, <laughs> right? Uh, so I did it and those who did with me and then we were just smiling at each other because uh, and looking pointing with our eyes at those people who were pointing with their eyes against us you understand while refusing to sit down <laughs> ah. So it was a delicious moment a moment of true humanity that didn't end there because those people who sat on the floor we then started talking with each other and uh, exchanging views and they felt free to tell me all their personal insights about life literally like what they consider to be gems of knowledge they were just sharing i didn't ask i was just chilling they started telling me their personal discoveries about everything. It was an amazing moment of humanity. Humanity was re-established that day in that specific place. In short, I started a trend. From that moment on, 
every time I went to a line, I just at some point, when my legs were tired, of course, I just sat down. And I started noticing that more and more people were doing the same. And that less and less people were looking at us with hatred. And not only that, I also noticed that people started talking more in the lines. Not just with me then, but with everybody else. Communication expanded. It did not minimize. The fears were gone. There was no punishment. There is no hell. Except the one we create up here. That's the worst hell. There might be hells. I'm not saying I'm not God. I'm not saying there might be hell. However, it's an image in our minds that have been inserted by others erroneously with all their petty prejudices with our personal signatures, let's put it that way, that did not exist. And just for me, sitting in the ground that day, because my legs were tired, unleashed a whole new approach to lines, where people were literally talking happily in lines at the end of a couple of years. It was amazing to notice it. So that's my level of confidence because that was just the start. I did other things related pertaining my philosophy that proven to be consistent and not just consistent, but generally good that should be done. So when I take a step, or rather when I sit down, <laughs> let's put it that way, about some topic, when I'm involved into something, I can eventually be wrong. But what if I'm right? And after all the experience, after 50 years, because I understand some people are concerned about me. They are afraid that I, I get hurt. And I thank those people for it. And you should be, I am for you. I'll be there for you anytime you need me. So they get scared or paranoid or, you know. But be sure, if I took a stand, I probably thought about it a lot. I'm very self-conscious. And I usually think a lot before I open my gab or before I do something. It's even more thought. I, I think 10 times more, you know, than just opening my, just before I open my gab. So actually 10 times more to do something before I do something. So when I do I have checked it from a thousand angles before I take the step, before I sit down. And I only sit down because I'm tired. I'm tired and I can see it's something stupid that is irrelevant. That if I just do something about it, if I just take the, the next step in our social evolution, in our social interaction, a harmless, harmless, personal step that do not hurt anyone. On the contrary, it's relieving. I probably thought about it a thousand times over from different perspectives. But there is a point where your legs get tired and you just need to sit down and have a talk if you feel like it. 
I was not the one who initiated the conversations that day. I know that for sure. But people were so happy about what I just discovered that they wanted to share the best of their knowledge with me that day. It was amazing. It was an amazing moment. And sure, not all of them were right, <laughs> but, uh, but they surely made me think. And they made me a bit more wiser about a lot of other different issues or topics or angles that I didn't have before that day that I took that extra step that was not degrading in any shape or form despite people behaving like that. But nobody really ever thought about it until that moment. Well, I'm sure some people did, but somehow me doing it unchained a series of events that led me to exposing being invited to uh, international exhibition with people like Yoko Ono and things I would have never expected in my life just by taking that extra step and if I can do it you can do it think well before you do something you should think well because people usually don't think they get carried away you should always be careful before you take a step because it can have consequences especially when you take steps against other people there will be consequences because you never get in between a person and their food for instance it's a figure of speech okay don't take it literally However, it's a figure of speech, little sentence you should reflect about. But if it does not involve anyone, still think about it. But take the step if it is something that can bring some good for you, especially when it does not involve other people other than your own, other than yourself. You should take that step because it won't hurt I can tell you that and it might be very enlightening and I think now I have life experience enough to talk about it because I saw that it works and it keeps working and it never stops working when you are tired relax when you need something go search for it <sighs> yeah major point is if you don't take the first step nothing gets done and that's a fact and that day was very opening to how to solve our next issue as a society a global society it's inevitable now you know, when you, when you can travel, before in time, like a hundred years ago, you, it took weeks to get to a country to another, to get to a continent to another. Today, it's in the same day, in less than 24 hours, you are in a different continent. You are in the center of a continent today, and today you go down in the center of another continent. And you can even pick it up to go to another continent in a day. That changes everything. We are in an age of changes, of massive changes. And I'm not even sure if we can handle all this. We probably can't, but we can tackle it by referring to our real needs. Forget dogma forget uh, systems of control forget unnecessary aspects of life you know check what really matters and live that 
reflect about it. But if you see that it can harm no one except yourself, go for it. Because at the end of the day, it might not harm you. It might open up a whole set of possibilities just by doing what you feel like doing instead of fearing what others might say or do about it. It's time we evolve as a society. We stop controlling each other and instead we start living more. We start minding our own business again instead of trying to mind the business of everybody else. Because today we don't need to. Maybe we never needed to. And that's something we are realizing as a, as a species. We might never have needed to control so much. So, yeah, that's the way to solve it. It's time to let old, obsolete, unnecessary morals go and to be ourselves, to be human once again, to be logical once again. Remember, children are born logical. Society destroys it. That needs to stop. Because there is a reason why we are logical. A survival reason. And with that, that we might perish. If our scientists ha can be stopped by people who point at their shirt when they just figured a way of saving humanity from future potential threats that have happened before and almost destroyed everything. And now we, <laughs> that technology, those scientists figure the way of saving because of the shirt that they are wearing. That needs to stop, especially when the grounds are absolutely unfounded. A scientist, I, I never wish to see again a scientist being in his knees crying and apologizing for something that is absolutely untrue. And uh, not just untrue, what gives those people the right to do that to a mind like this that saved humanity from potential threats? and did nothing wrong, and actually was promoting a woman. Do you understand? Just because of some moralistic, false sense of morality that, you know, it was even not true at all. It turned out not to be true. But you know, the hysteria, right? Don't let that influence you in any way. Because we are about to face, you haven't seen nothing yet in that sense. We are about to face a lot of threats caused by the misinformation of people who just chose not to be happy. Do you understand? And make everybody, misery loves company. Bear that in mind. Whenever you see someone trashing someone else, misery loves company. Don't let that. Don't believe in idle gossip. That can be the ruin of a society. Because that's what creates unnecessary dogmas and unnecessary morals. A false moralism. A hypocrisy. Because usually the people who point that kind of stuff out, it's because they are a projection of their issues on you. Never let that. Or on others. Okay, stand, gr stand ground, defend people from false accusations instead of supporting just because you can get a kick out of it. No, relax, learn to relax again. We are a very stressed out society. People are literally drugging kids to stay in school because it's so unnatural. We are not designed to that. That's the current society we have. Oh, the children, the children, think of the children. They don't care about the children. Not if they force children into 
something completely unnatural as we have today. Did you know that the educational system, the school system, is based in the penitentiary system, in the system that is used to punish the worst that we have in society, is used to educate, it doesn't, our children. And it was created by a country that doesn't even exist anymore. They lost several wars and they ceased to be. Some might say, oh, they transformed. No, they ceased to be. <laughs> they are no more. That society that they, they were based on is no more. So it did not really work, did it? So just saying. The people who held power in that society are no more. So time to move on, time to figure out what we need to do is to figure out all the unnecessary rules that we are following for whatever reason and just forget them and just not use them because they are unnecessary and we don't need to. And currently, as I've seen people commit suicide because of those morals or kill their own their own children. You can kill your own children. You can be conditioned by fear to kill your own children. That's not right. That's not humane at all. That's inhumane. And whatever society that does this, that manages to condition people to that point, is dystopic. It doesn't matter what kind of society, if ideologically driven or religiosity driven, when God has no religion, and what religion can, can disagree to that? And this was not spoken by me, it was spoken by someone who is respected by, as far as I know, all religions, all religious figures. And he said, God has no religion. So am I wrong in pointing it out? Sure, if religion helps you, be useful. However, bear in mind that no one should kill their own children regardless. That's not God's will. Who said that's God's will? That's their will. And they are using God as an excuse. That's something else. And ideologies, you are not far behind. Instead, you are way ahead in that sense. So, time to get rid of obsolete ideas that do not work. And not just don't work, they are counterproductive. Because currently, if not before, but today, they are being used to hurt good people. Do not let good people be hurt by bad people, regardless of the excuse. <sighs> yeah. So that's a way that I figured out how to get rid of the superfluous in our society. Thus bettering things for everyone. Making everyone have a better day. And I did that in that specific place, at least, in that specific country. So if I did that and several other things after that, just imagine what I or you or he or she or they can do next. Just by getting rid of something that turns out was just made up in the first place. For no reason other than just being made up. That was completely inhumane. To stand in a line for, for a whole day is inhumane. Our bodies are not designed for that. Are they? Correct me if I'm wrong, but what if I'm right? So let that sink in. If I can do that, you can do it too. You can do better. Because I know it sounds corny, but I believe in you, I believe in humankind. 
after all I've seen in 15 years, I believe in humanity. Otherwise, I wouldn't be putting myself to the ridicule making this silly video, would I? But if you think about it, it's not silly at all. For some, it might be even to be dangerous. But it's not. It's just me sitting down and having a chat.